At the 2013 Garden Writers Symposium in Quebec City, I had an idea. I met so many successful garden writers that it made me wonder, what does it really take to make a decent living as a freelance garden communicator? I mean, everyone can't do it the same way, right? Every single person at that symposium and at this one has had to do it differently. We've all had to forge our own way. And then I wondered, are we really utilizing the massive potential we all have to learn from each other? I know we network at these meetings, and that's a great way to inspire new ideas and generate new business contacts. But what if we could walk in another garden writer's shoes, just for a little while? What if we could see the way they work, how they set goals and move forward? What if we could learn from their successes and failures the same way we learn from our own? And so I decided to see for myself what I could learn from three different garden writers at three different points in their career, just by following them for a while. So last September, soon after we left Quebec City, I asked each of them to set five goals, and then I simply checked in with them every few months to follow their progress. What I learned was some pretty interesting stuff. I'll start by letting them introduce themselves and tell you about the goals they set a year or so ago. Hi, I'm Amy Anderhovich, and I'm the author of the blog Get Busy Gardening. Uh, I've been blogging for about almost four years now. Uh, I'm very active on social media uh, like Facebook and Twitter and uh, a few others. Uh, and I, I enjoy, enjoy interacting with others on social media and have a lot of followers. Um, I'm a software engineer by trade. That's what I do for my day job. Um, and I, but gardening is my passion. My first goal, my big goal, uh, is to determine my brand and build my brand. I've been kicking around the idea. I think, um, I guess I'm, I'm sort of thinking of tapping into, you know, a, the younger garden market, um, trying to figure out, um, you know, kind of how to make gardening fun and cool yet inexpensive, so that you know, people that are younger, just starting out, maybe buying their first house, um, can get into it without worrying about breaking the bank. You know, I think my second major goal uh, that I've been actually working on this year, but I want to continue to grow next year, is the number of followers I have, not only on my blog but also with Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube, and other social medias. So just try to get even more active in those and grow those numbers of followers. My third goal is, is uh, creating more videos. Uh, a lot of my readers have actually even said that they really want me to do more videos as well. So um, this year, one of my main focuses is going to be uh, creating videos on, on YouTube and then building my subscribers on YouTube as well. For writing, I, I would love, this year I really want to learn how to uh, write a book proposal and maybe even start one, uh, start a book proposal, start writing a book. Um, and then on top of that as well, I'd like uh, the, my fifth goal would probably be uh, more paid writing jobs uh, to be able to write for maybe more magazines, more newspapers, uh, just to get my name out there and, and get more paid writing jobs. Steve Biggs here. I'm a farm, food, and garden writer. And uh, I've pulled together those three because I think those areas have a lot in common and those are, are my three interests. So I write about everything from vegetable gardening to food production, farm business, farm stories, and I even interviewed a celebrity chef this past year. So, so that's my niche. And I write in print for three or four magazines, mostly in the farm and garden sector. I have two books out, one on vegetable gardening, one on growing figs in northern climates. And I have, this is all part time. I have three kids, ages four, five, and eight. And the smallest one just started half day junior kindergarten today. So this is opening up a whole new phase in my life because I now have two, three hours a day where I can focus on my writing. I have put together a few goals for the coming year. 
and I need to organize my business and, and get some goals together because as I said, the last little while has been hectic and I haven't focused on the business. So goal number one is just some new writing markets. And uh, what my goal is, is to get into three new print magazines over the next year. And that'll be both in the farm and the garden sector. Uh, goal number two is to refine my online presence and um, the way things are now, I have five websites, Twitter, LinkedIn, a Facebook profile, four Facebook pages, a newsletter, and I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed by it all and I really don't know what it's bringing to me in terms of money. So um, I think I, I need to be more active though to build my online brand and what that's going to mean is probably getting rid of a website or two and maybe some of the Facebook and social media stuff. Goal number three. Um, this is a pretty broad goal, but as I mentioned earlier, I have three young kids and I'm pretty passionate about gardening with my kids. And what I'd like to do is to build my reputation as somebody who can give insights into gardening with kids. Goal number four is to get a corporate writing gig. Everything I'm doing is freelance. Uh, it's for periodicals, but I would really like to have just some regular income that uh, I'm writing on a regular basis for a company and, um, and I, I don't have to think about pitching and creative story ideas. So goal number four is to get a corporate writing gig Goal number five is to fire a client. It might sound silly, but in the past I had one client who made up most of my income for the year. But I was writing about stuff that really, it was painful for me. I was writing about property management. The people at this company, they were all nice, but they were unorganized and it made me look bad. So in the end, I fired them. And I think I'm in a situation now where I have a client who is nice, but is taking a disproportionate amount of time and it's not financially rewarding. So. Goal number five is to fire a client. My name is Nan Sturman. I am a garden writer, a garden communicator in uh, Encinitas, California, which is a little bit north of San Diego, about a half hour drive. I write articles for magazines and newspapers, and I write books, and I speak, and I teach, and I lecture, and I design gardens. I do radio, I do television, I have a new television series that we can talk about in a few minutes if you want. I lead garden tours around the world. I'm very, I, I get very tired. <laughs> so, so my first goal is to finish uh, the second season of our TV show, which is called A Growing Passion. We just started shooting this week. I, we've done it over the course of many years. Um, a couple of episodes here and there. I had the opportunity about a year ago to really do a whole season of shows. And so we seized that opportunity. I have a partner who is my business partner. She's a producer. I come up with all the story ideas. Um, she comes up with a few of them, but I mostly the story ideas are mine. The contacts are mostly mine. We, we scout the locations together because I want her to see what each place is because she's got the visual and I've got the the content. Um, we scout together, we write the scripts together, um, I vet all the content, and then I'm the on-air host. My second goal this year is to finish my next book. It's called Hot Colors Dry Garden. I'm writing it for Timber Press, and um, it is about color in the low water garden. I've got some of the text written, but it's not, it's really rough at this point. I mean, I have the outline, I have some of the content generated, I have a lot of notes. I have to pull it together and, and do the formal um, text for it. My third goal for this year is to create a new website and brand for myself. I have had Plant Soup as my brand for a very long time, which at the time I came up with that idea, it was sort of, I did everything and soup was everything. You could throw everything into a soup and that made sense. 
at this point in my career, I'm much more specialized. This whole issue of, of low water climate appropriate, which includes sustainable and edible, is really what I'm known for. And I've also realized that when people are looking for me, they're looking for me. They're not looking for plant soup. Part of why I chose a name that wasn't me initially was because I wanted to create something that was not focused on me, that didn't feel comfortable. But I've learned that that's not what people pay attention to. They look for Nan Sturman, just like they probably look for Jessica Walliser, right? So I have to step up to that and say, okay, if you're looking for me, here I am, and this is what I do. My fourth goal for this year is I'm working on putting together a workshop for February for garden writers. It is a video workshop, and what we're doing is training people to create their own little short, maybe 30-second videos that they can post on their websites or their blogs or anything like that. Everybody wants to know how to do that. Some people know, not many. So um, I'm the national director in Region 6, and I've been wanting to do this for quite a while. I have a couple other things up my sleeve, but my most important, last most important goal is to replant my front garden. When you become a professional in this arena, at least for me, I spend so much time doing the work, the work being the writing, the television, all that other, that I don't have as much time for my garden as I did before. And it's heartbreaking. But at the same time, it is what it is. In order to you know, make a living and earn the money I need to earn, we all know this is not a high paid profession, you have to work a lot of hours. And what falls out the bottom, unfortunately, is the garden. Hearing them describe their goals, the first thing I noticed was that all three of them have some sort of branding objective. Amy says she needs to create and define her brand. Steve wants to enhance his brand by building notoriety in a different area of expertise. And Nan? Well, she's aiming for a complete overhaul of a very established brand. It made me ask myself, what's my brand? Am I who I want to be? And if so, am I conveying that message to my audience? Is my brand clear from my website, my lecture topic list, my business cards, my logo? You may want to ask yourself the same questions because as you'll come to see, they're important ones. So I thought about all of that for the next two months, and then I checked in with everyone again in December. I was excited to see if anybody had made progress. As it turns out, not only did all three of them take a long, hard look at their branding, they also took a long, hard look at the rest of their goals and started to move forward. Uh, so over the last few months, I have focused on my first two goals the most. Uh, the first goal being uh, really branding, more about branding. I had uh, talked also about uh, determining the blog audience, but I really focused more on branding and uh, wanting to determine my brand and narrowing that down. And then also growing uh, the number of followers I have for all my social media and my blog. Um, and one of the things that I decided would really would really be the best uh, starting point for that is to switch from Blogger to WordPress uh, because WordPress just has it's just a, a way better tool. It has a lot more um, you know plugins and things that you could add to it to make it easier to maintain. The next thing that kind of goes hand in hand with that, since I'm switching from uh, Blogger to WordPress, that means I have to you know pick a whole new theme for my blog design and everything. Uh, so I decided that I also, at the same time, it makes sense to redesign my website and my blog and bring my branding into that and um, really kind of bring that out in my blog and make it more obvious what, what I'm trying to accomplish, what my, what my blog is about, what I'm about. So that's the main focus over the last couple of months. Hi, Jessica. So when we checked in last, my first goal was to write for three new magazines, three new um, print outlets. And a couple of weeks ago, I realized that this meeting was coming up and I thought, oh, oh, I haven't gone anywhere with that. So I quickly sent out queries to four new magazines. And um, I'm excited to report that I did sell a piece to a new magazine. 
And um, what's exciting for me about this is that it's not a gardening magazine. And I've taken a garden um, theme and I've sold it to a magazine that's about public spaces. There's a historic house and a garden side by side, so I've tied the two together into, uh, into a story. I was feeling overwhelmed, and I still do feel overwhelmed, but um, what I did a couple of weeks ago is I decided that I'm definitely going to can one of my websites, and so I did not renew the subscription. So I think at the end of this month, that website will come down. And that'll be the end of that website and the newsletter that I was doing with it. Other thing I've done in terms of refining my online presence is I have been trying to blog a little bit more on my FIG website. So uh, FIGS is one of my areas that I'm very interested in. And on my FIG website, I've been trying to go in every week or two weeks and, and put up a, a blog with something interesting. And then that feeds through to my Facebook. Um, I think I told you that my two little kids are now in, in half the kindergarten so I was excited about all this extra writing time I would have and it didn't turn out that way because then I went and volunteered three afternoons a week at the school but the flip side to this is that I'm around little kids three afternoons a week now a whole classroom full of them and it's quite inspiring and it's given me lots of ideas for writing about kids and writing for kids so um, so that's the first good step the other thing I've been working on is a book proposal, Gardening with Kids. So I've, I've got something coming along there, and I'm feeling very inspired about that. A little while ago, I saw a um, call for quotes on translating a book about market gardening, so I guess farming, if you will, vegetable farming, from uh, French to English. And I got in touch with the people looking for help, and I didn't end up getting the, the translating gig. But as a result of, of talking to these people, I did get a gig translating a blog. And so um, I've been doing some blog translating, French to English, and it's all about growing vegetables and it's really exciting and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Last time I promised that I was going to fire a client and not, not anything mean-spirited or, or upfront, but just really um, not pitching, um, what has been uh, a consistent but uh, time-consuming and low-paying client. And so I have held true to that uh, idea and I haven't pitched this client any further and I won't be. Our days typically start 7 or 7.30 in the morning and we're done by 4. So what's that? 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4. Nine hour days, you know, with half an hour for lunch. And if you do 30 of those, and that's only the filming, that's only the shooting. That doesn't include scouting, writing scripts, doing the business end of the work, um, the editing, which I don't get hugely involved in, but to some extent I'm involved, voiceovers, rewriting scripts. It's just, it's a very big job. I think we have two more shoot days. Um, which is mostly pickup stuff, you know, things that are little bits and pieces, opens and closes of shows, and uh, one segment. By the time I talk to you in February, half of our shows will have aired. That will be a huge relief and very exciting. I had to negotiate um, some new deadlines with my publisher, who was thankfully amenable to doing that because. Um, it's, it's really challenging to have your brain focused in two different areas, especially two such different, right, you know, a book and video at the same time. So um, that's been rescheduled and now I've, I'm back to working on that. And then when we sort of broke the whole thing down into what are my messages, what are the, what are the content areas, what are the components of the website going to be, you know, how, how, what is the brand, really? What's the brand? I woke up one day and thought, what is it I'm trying to do here? Gardens that are low water, that are beautiful, that are ed that include edibles. What is it that that really brings that all together? And what came to me was a pomegranate, which is a beautiful red color. In fact, it's the color almost of a shirt you're wearing. It is a beautiful plant. It survives on no water. 
and it makes wonderful fruit. And so I got back to her and I said, okay, what about this idea? And um, anyway, that's that was the direction we took it. And I, I keep looking at what she's done now and it's like, okay, that's it. This is where we need to go. The way things work with garden writers is you can't have an overnight regional meeting. So we have a workshop on one day, we have a regional meeting on the next day, and whoever wants will come to one or the other or both in Santa Barbara. Um, you know, I had to put together the, uh, the um, curricula. Joan and I gave Joan and Kevin some ideas of what I thought should happen, and they took that and then came up with what they want to teach, which is great. And um, uh, we had to pull in some sponsors. Joan was very helpful with making suggestions, and I went to them and said, hey, do you want to sponsor this? And they said yes. Right now, we are now in prime planting time. So in addition to all that, I've got, I just finished one garden installation. I've got another one going on and I have one starting next week. As I'm shopping and buying plants for my projects, I'm also bringing back, you know, a couple here for me and a couple. So the, so the front garden is getting some attention, just not the concentrated attention I really would like to be able to give it. Just a few months after the project started, goals were already being completed. Progress was being made. It was exciting to hear that Amy and Nan had settled on their new brands and were both busy building their new websites. Steve got another magazine assignment, streamlined some online projects while building others, and he was quickly moving forward on his own brand enhancement. We didn't meet again until February. It was minus 17 here in Pittsburgh the day we talked. I remember it because I kept thinking about how smart Amy was. You'll hear her tell me about how she just posted videos of her summer garden to her YouTube channel. It was the dead of winter, but it was perfect timing. Everyone needed a lift, a gardening fix. I, I've come up with uh, kind of the branding for my site and defined, defined what that is. And then um, I have uh, next week, actually, um, I actually hired somebody to uh, do some of the graphic design parts of the website for me. So I'm hoping that will go live next week sometime or the week after, hopefully by March 1st, really. I did a lot of research about branding and, and um, just how to build your blog and how to grow your blog. Um, and just through some of those resources and websites, um, I started seeing names of, of people that they were recommending. Um, and then I started looking for other websites um, that I really liked and seeing who did the designs on those. And I started noticing a lot of the same names on those designs. So um, I just started contacting some of those people of designs that I really liked and uh, narrowed it down based on price and, and things that... that uh, the different things that they offered and that's how I, I chose her. I went through and um, I picked maybe 10 different websites that I really liked um, around just any different website, not necessarily gardening related. Um, and then told her, basically told her the things that I liked about those websites, um, maybe different logos that I found that I liked or full websites um, and then just kind of came up with um, a list of things that I really liked. and. Um, and let her run with it. It continues to grow. I, um, I mean, slowly. I haven't had any huge spikes, but I definitely um, continue to engage on all of my social media as much as I can, and um, and uh, it continues to grow. So it's going good. <laughs> I've been trying slowly to get that done. That's a lot more work. Um, of, that's why it's going so slow because that takes a long time to for the videos, putting them together, editing them, getting them out there on YouTube is um, a time consumer. <laughs> but yes, I do have a few new ones. I actually shot a bunch of um, videos this summer of uh, just different areas of my garden and walked through, did little garden tours basically. Um, and I thought winter would be the perfect time to start posting those because I have a lot of people that have been telling me on my uh, social media sites that they're having major uh, spring fever. So I'm, I'm, I thought maybe starting to post some of those videos would help. <laughs> 
I should start the whole conversation by saying, so my life has been upside down a bit since our last check-in, a sick parent, and you know, so lots of distractions outside of the writing business. So uh, I haven't got done as much as I want, but shit happens. So I finished that one article that uh, I had sold and got it in, and I was really happy with it. So I think that's a nice potential future market for me. And other than that, I've done no other queries. The other thing, though, that sidetracked me from my garden writing querying is I had a good opportunity come up. In fact, I've had a couple editors query me to do stuff. And so because of that, I haven't been soliciting new work outside of my normal circles. So uh, the one magazine especially, I can pretty much write as much as I want over the next two or three months, and they'll buy it all because they have a need due to some internal staffing issues. Well, so the first thing, I think last time I checked in, I was in the process of closing a website, so that's done. And uh, then I was mulling over whether to get rid of some Facebook uh, pages. So I, I closed one Facebook page. And uh, so I feel good about those. That's actually a big, big relief. It's less to look after. I'm very stoked about this idea still. And so let's see, I have a few updates. The first thing would be that uh, I found out that there's a, a children's author that lives in my neighborhood who had presented at my daughter's school a couple years back. And this is somebody who's done lots of books through lots of different publishers. And so I just got in touch and I said, may I take you out for coffee? We had coffee, we chatted, she gave me some insights into children's books. And um, and then what's neat is that we decided to barter because we had a terrible ice storm here right before Christmas. That was the other thing that threw life upside down. So huge branches down everywhere. We were without power for days. And so I was telling this children's author that I bought a chainsaw. Turns out she had lots of branches down. So she said, hey, can we barter? Can you help saw up some of these huge branches for me? And I'll help mentor you. So um, it was just yesterday that I was over there sawing up branches and we were chatting about some ideas possible collaboration so I feel really really good about that so I think kids gardening books is something that's on the horizon for me um, and I had a couple I, I did talk to a, a book editor too so I just found out a little bit about the process there and then I've talked to a couple of friends who are in the book world just for ideas so I have my feelers out in a few different directions Season two of A Growing Passion has been on the air now for this week is week five, which reminds me I have to write a blog post for today. Tonight, there's an episode airing. I'm trying to remember which episode. I believe it is, um, I believe it is Food Justice. An episode on Food Justice airs tonight. So this is five out of the six, and it's been incredibly well received. We're now in planning stages for season three, both in terms of what episodes we're going to cover and um, our sponsorship. I have now completed, uh, I think, 10 out of the 15 um, garden profiles. It also feels good to be making you know, some really significant headway on that. The, the garden descriptions are the, the bulk of the book, and they're the hardest part, which is why I started with them. It also is the hardest thing to do. So that's moving forward, and I'm feeling really good about it. Logo's done, the business cards are done, you know, all that stuff is done. My next step before I start using them is to actually have the website designed. So that's on actually my, was, I forgot, we were, you and I were talking, and it's on my list for this week. I have to email the woman who has been doing websites for me and get an estimate from her on, um, what the cost is going to be. The video workshop didn't happen, which was very disappointing to us. We just didn't get enough people. And we had quite a number of people who responded and said, oh darn, I wish I could, but. So that was a big disappointment. And it's a really good topic. Doing you know videos, making your own videos for your website and your blog is a really good topic. People are really interested in it. You know, it didn't it didn't fly at the at the minimum number that we needed. After our February interview, I was getting anxious to see Amy's new website and logo. 
I know she's positioning herself as a how-to expert on do-it-yourself gardening projects for young people living on a budget, but would she be able to get that objective across on her new blog and in her new logo? Would her enthusiasm about it come across as loud and clear on her website as it does when you talk to her in person? And Nan's progress on her book manuscript had her feeling good, but I know she was disappointed about the video workshop not coming to fruition, especially after putting so much work into planning it. But that happens sometimes, doesn't it? We put forth a lot of effort towards one of our goals and nothing comes of it. There's a lesson in there somewhere, I'm sure. But it's one that Nan probably doesn't want to hear, so I'll keep it to myself. Steve's enthusiasm about his new mentor was clearly very genuine, and I love how he exchanged physical work for her advice, paying her for her time in a very unique way. But it was his comment about his life being upside down that worried me. He had stuff going on in his world that would surely continue to change his priorities over the coming months. Well, it was more stressful than I imagined that it would be. There's lots of things that you have to decide when you're completely redesigning your website, figure out what you want it to look like. You know, after the branding part, it's going into the whole website design too. So I did both of those um, together. It's kind of like decorating a whole house. You know, you gotta pick, or if you're building a new house, maybe that's a better analogy. You gotta pick all of your light fixtures. You gotta pick out all, all of your, little tiny things like light switches and you know what knobs you want on your cabinets you know stupid stuff that you don't think about when you buy a house and it's the same thing it's like okay now what font do you want and what color do you want your buttons and what color do you want your text and what should the header be and what should the sidebar be and it just it was a lot to think about but I picked out every single thing um, and I yeah <laughs> it was stressful but it was good it turned out awesome I haven't been completely focusing on social media. I still post things on a regular basis. And like I said before, I feel like um, my numbers and my interaction have grown just from the whole process of rebranding and changing the way, you know, changing the things that I talk about and the pictures that I post and whatever else. My focus for the next few months is going to be definitely um, on growing that social media and continuing on with that. And then the YouTube videos will be my next goal as well. So I'm hoping that now that it's warmer outside, I can take the camera outside and do some uh, videos out there instead of trying to figure out all the lighting and everything inside. Uh, that's a big challenge too. So. Yeah, so those are, those are my top two priorities for the next couple of months. So since we last talked, uh, I have had to step away from uh, my freelance writing. I finished off a couple jobs. I, I turned down some work that I was asked to do and I've pitched nothing new or solicited no new customers. Um, but I, was, I got thinking about this uh, before our uh, meeting today, Jessica, and I was thinking that uh, even though I haven't really worked for four months or made any money, I was feeling pretty wealthy because um, I was able to spend the last four months with my, my mom as, as uh, she was coming close to the end. So. Um, no, I'm, I'm really happy that I'm a freelancer right now because it's given me some very important time to, to put family first. My sister and I are helping my dad uh, figure out what he's doing, so I, I need to do uh, spend time with him. And, uh, and then I need to sit down and start that whole planning process again. I, I haven't been able to focus really for the last four months. I have those days where I think, why am I a freelancer? Because sometimes there's so many distractions and it seems as if it creates more stress in life. But um, yeah, being able to do what I was just able to do really shows the value of that. A growing passion is growing. I mean, it's really, you know, it's we're on that on that trajectory. We're we're making this happen. It's really getting to be something that people know about, they're interested in. So we're going to do 12 episodes next season instead of six, and there's some really cool things planned, and I'm really excited about it. So, um, just about done with the hardest part, which is 
the information about how to design colorful low water gardens, um, both both the technical and the conceptual. And I have this whole, I'm still formulating research in this whole section I want to write on color and color perception. That's been the most difficult because I've been looking for research data to back up my hypothesis. And it's just not that easy to come by. The website is under development right now. It's in the early stages of development. The content outline has been created. Um, the the you know I hired somebody to do it, um, and we're in the thick of it. You know we're in the process of of uh, we chose a template, WordPress template, and now it's it's a matter of refining that content outline and getting them to implement it. So I'm hoping that, you know, we're a few months away from launching that website. I mean, the garden, interestingly, I haven't planted, except for my vegetable garden, I haven't planted any ornamental plants in the last three weeks, probably, because it's been so hot. I've been working on the front garden slowly, but in the heat, you don't want to plant. The front garden, Right now, my major goal is to keep it going. And I've done some, you know, thinning out and stuff like that. But I'm a little hesitant to add a lot to it right now because of the heat. After talking with everyone in May, two important points came to light. One professional and one very personal. The first thing that really sunk in as a result of this interview was that I'm not alone in finding it hard to juggle a bunch of work projects. I'm not the only one who gets stressed and drinks way too much wine. Yes, those of us who freelance and manage to have enough work to keep us busy are very fortunate. But many of us have our hands in multiple media outlets. We have to, just to keep our careers afloat. This project was hammering home the point that time management is a life skill and achieving balance is never easy. Amy's new website was finally up and running. If you've ever done this yourself, you know what a monumental task it is. But there was little time for her to celebrate because she's moving right on to her next project. And Nan, she completed her goal of filming season two of A Growing Passion and immediately dove headfirst into season three. That's how it works, because it seems that every time one item gets checked off our to-do lists, another three get tacked on to the end. Moving forward means constantly setting new goals, and sometimes that can get overwhelming. But Steve's words put all the craziness of this career into perspective. His comments on the freedom of freelancing are so, so significant, because yes, Setting and chasing your goals is important, but family should always come first. Sometimes it's hard to remember that, especially when work is pulling you in 10 different directions. But the ability to put it all down and be there when you're needed is a true blessing. We met one last time just a few weeks ago. During the interview, you'll see all three of them starting to form new goals for the coming year switching their focus and direction towards new projects. You'll hear that Nan is looking forward to working with an editor on her now completed manuscript for Hot Colors Dry Garden. Steve is excited to start building a proposal for his children's gardening book. And as she points out, Amy has clearly met her goal of expanding her audience on social media and is now looking forward to maybe finding her niche in video production. The blog is is going great. I really am thrilled with it. It's going really well. I'm just, like I said, working to try to continue building, you know, more more content. So it's a busy time of year, but it's also the time that's busiest for you know my blog and people reading my blog. So constantly just working on content. So. A year ago today, I started tracking my social media numbers. Um, and back uh, last year at this time, I had 374 Twitter followers, uh, 2,356 Facebook followers, 60 on Google Plus, and um, 1,800 um, on Pinterest. 
So I've looked at my numbers now, and um, right now I have 1,550 Twitter followers, which means I gained almost 1,200 Twitter followers in the this year. Uh, for Facebook, I ha I'm at 3,500, which means I've gained about 1,200 Facebook followers. Um, on Google Plus, I am at 242, and that means I've gained about a, about 180 Google Plus followers. Um, Pinterest, I'm at 2482, so that's about um, 660 new followers. You know, as far as growing my numbers, I think that you know it, it does help that the more the more followers you have, the more followers it's, it's easier to get more followers, just because people start to see your numbers and your numbers are high, and so then they I think that they, that makes you more credible, so that means they want to follow you too. Um, plus. You've got a lot more interaction, so especially on Facebook um, and then Twitter as well. Just the more interaction you have, the more people will see your, you know, your posts and your tweets, and and you'll get out there so people can follow you and find you. So. I mean, I, I like write, yeah, I like the writing part, but I don't know that I'm interested in becoming a full-time, you know, writer only. I, I prefer, you know, I do like other media, and I really like doing videos um, and things like that. So that's kind of. I kind of want to pursue that goal more. I still want to quit my day job and, and become a full-time garden something. I'm just not sure that full-time writer um, is is really that where that where I want that to go right now. I just feel like, um, like I said, video and um, things like that, you know, would be a lot. I think I think personally, it would be a lot more enjoyable for me to put my content out there in um, maybe a recorded format like that rather than a written format only. I had these goals set at the beginning of the year. I didn't really know exactly, you know, what that meant or where that would lead me. Um, and I think the more that I do this and the more that I see uh, the opportunities that are out there in this field, I just feel like, um, I feel like that there might be, you know, I, I enjoy video more and I think it would just be more opportunity for me long term uh, to switch to, to different formats. So. I've had um, other work coming in that's making me wonder how much I'll pursue the magazine side of things. Just for the, the time it takes to, to query and to, to build new customers on the magazine side, um, I'm not sold on the idea that I want to do that anymore, so to be determined. So um, that's been going well, and I think I'll pare it down even more, but um, I got rid of a website. Uh, and I got rid of the uh, a Facebook uh, page and um, then I simplified all my hosting platforms because I found that the overhead from for paying for all these hosting platforms was getting to be a lot. So I, I went in and I went down to the most basic packages I could on that end of things too. So I feel good about getting all that done and I'm playing with dropping one more website. So this is what I'm most excited about, and when I talk about maybe spending less time on magazines, uh, this is why, because time is limited and I'm so excited about this goal. So yesterday I, I had coffee with my mentor for three hours. I, uh, I found a, a kid's author who lives nearby, just a few blocks away, and I traded her, I can't remember if we talked about it in the winter, I traded her some chainsawing of uh, fallen branches in her backyard for some time to chat over coffee. So anyway, we got together yesterday. She had some great ideas for me. I bounced some ideas off of her. Uh, we really hit it off. And and I see three possible proposals that I can work on now. And I'm just so excited about it. One of them includes my daughter, who maybe I'll include her in the book too. So I'm so excited about that. That just trumps everything else in my mind right now. I've made huge progress in the last couple of months on my book and um, will have the bulk of it submitted before the symposium. There'll still be some work to do after the symposium, but the bulk of it, the hard writing parts, um, are will be done by then and I've written most of the garden stories already, I just have a couple more to go challenge of where I have been is it's a very as you know writing is a very solo activity and and especially when you're writing something big at least for me I get to a point where I crave the interaction I crave collaboration I crave getting feedback 
And so far that hasn't happened. And so I'm, I'm very curious and very anxious to start getting some feedback on it. So hopefully that will start soon. That's, you know, that's on there. end. Web developer right now, we have the template. It's, it's all in process. I have the mockups right now. We've been going back and forth deciding on, you know, the, the details. So we're at the detail level. And uh, just about the point to start really putting in the content may or may not be done by the time I get to Pittsburgh. I'd love it if it were. If it isn't, it'll be almost done. In, the, in summer, it's too hot to plant anything here, too hot and too dry. So we don't plant now, but I'm watching things that I've planted over the last, you know, course of the year or since last fall, uh, put on size and grow and um, just really keeping track of how things are going and it's filling in and watching some of the new plants start with their first bloom and that's looking pretty good too. My front garden continues to be a laboratory for seeing what actually will thrive with minimalist irrigation and are obviously our minimal rainfall. By the end of this project, I had six and a half hours of recorded interviews. We talked about all sorts of things, sharing advice and stories and cursing Skype. I learned a lot about myself as a garden communicator and about each of them. I learned that Amy is a Jedi master of social media. You want to know how to design your Twitter profile for maximum impact? She's your girl. You want tips on writing Facebook posts that get more people to click on your links? Ask Amy. And Steve, he knows how to organize and keep himself on track. He's got an office full of whiteboards and query folders. He files things away and then he can actually find them years later. He's an idea man who has his act totally together. And then there's Nan. She's the queen of multitasking. She can switch from TV to radio to photography to print at the drop of a hat. I think she has some sort of magic switch in her brain. The point is that I found out that they're all good at something different. They're all good at things that I am decidedly not. Instead, I have different strengths. We all do. And it really doesn't matter what your biggest asset is. The important thing is to recognize it. Build on it. Use it to create your own goals. Ask yourself, what makes me tick? What is it that I'm really good at? And am I using it to move forward in my career? The deal is though, regardless of what you're good at, goals can keep you on track. They can serve as a career GPS, getting you where you want to go. So maybe the question I should have asked myself back in Quebec City isn't just what can we learn from each other, but also what can we learn from ourselves? Thriller, huh? Oh my god. <laughs> I don't even know where that came from. That's yes, you do. You were dancing before this call, weren't you? Hi again. Hi. I don't know what that was about. I'm going to blame it on our mayor. I'm blaming everything on him these days. I don't tend to set goals. I have... <laughs> Go ahead, tomorrow. Walk by. <laughs> How they're going to navigate through it is, is second nature to me. Let's take it. <coughs> Sorry. Bless you. <laughs> I must be interested to watch on screen. Hang on. Sorry. <laughs> we had a little accident. Oh, no. My kitten is a little um, out of control right now. <laughs> Things are growing. And are... Excuse me? <laughs> I fed you a little while ago. Why are you barking? I can see you moving into filmmaking. Thing. I don't, I really don't think so. But thank you for the confidence. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Take care, Steve. Take care. All bye, right. Jess. Bye bye.